Hi, good morning, Morro Bay, and welcome to the first day of summer. Summer solstice was a fantastic sunrise this morning. Um, I'd like to thank everybody in the audience for coming here today. And Today we have um, a new board member joining us. First, I'd like to really thank uh, Chris Kocheksa. Kosteka. Co Kosteka. Kosteka from the Estero Inn is joining our board, and uh, fantastic, so welcome. Um, Taylor Newton, I've got Sean Green, I've got Maggie Jern and Ken Clark, and uh, we have a fun agenda today going over our, our marketing plan. So um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. It is 9.02. And uh, are there any board member announcements? Seeing none. Let's go to Jennifer. Good morning. Good morning. I have no staff announcements at this time. I'd like to open the floor to public comment. Good morning, my name is Robert Davis. I'd like to welcome Mr. Costeca to the board and thank you for serving. Okay, we're gonna to move to our consent agenda this morning. Um, hopefully everyone has had the opportunity to review and edit if necessary the meetings from our May 17th meeting. Um, we have the tourism manager report on TOT as well as our marketing uh, update and I'd like to entertain a motion to receive unless we have any edits or corrections. We have a second? A second. Call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed abstentions? We're moving on. Okay. Good. Abstain. And on to be business items. Uh, presentation from Grant Awareness from the Morro Bay Car Show, Morro Bay High School Athletics, and the Morro Bay Kite Festival. Good morning, board. Um, Chris Parker from the Cruise of Morro Bay Car Show. And I, I wanna thank you guys for your involvement with the, uh, the event grant funding program. Um, this year we just had the 22nd annual uh, Cruise Morro Bay Car Show at the beginning of May. Um, the car show was started 22 years ago with the intent to bring visitors into town on what then was a slow weekend prior to the start of summer. Um, that, first, that first show we had 130 entrants. This year we had 542 which has been relatively on par for the past few years. Uh, right there in the middle of five and 600. Um, from the records I was able to pull after the show, it looked like we had approximately 2,300 hotel room stays for that Thursday through Saturday night. Uh, and we had entrants that came, you know, locally from California, some entrants from Nevada, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, and either, even a couple from Canada. And thanks to uh, your guys' grant this year of $4,500, we were able to leverage that money with our advertising uh, vendors and get matching or greater in-kind donations. And we ended up uh, turning that into approximately $16,000 worth of ad dollars. And also, in addition, we put up street banners downtown, I'm sure most of you have seen, and we put in a uh, posters inside storefronts um, around the county and we also take them over to the valley as well and place them in, in locations. Um, also this year we were able to overhaul our website uh, moralbaycarshow.org, bring it up to date and also put a nice page on there that puts a lot of links to uh, moralbay.org. Um, the show itself is all volunteer ran and the proceeds from the show, we return those back to the community through different organizations. Um, most of the, many of the organizations, or, organizations that help to put on the show, like Rotary and the Police Explorers, uh, Police Volunteers, Morro Bay High School Automotive Technology, Morro Bay High School Athletics. Um, but also this past year, we were able to, to donate to Women Aid of San Luis Obispo, along with um, the Slow Nor Foundation, which helps with uh, dental needs for people that aren't able to afford them. And we're looking forward to uh, another show in 2019. The dates for that are May 2nd through 5th. 
and we appreciate all of your help and support that we've we've gained through TVID. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is a great great event. It's you know one of the one of the biggest best events that thank is you. in our city. So thank you for thank the you continuation much. of this event. So just a couple things on the car show. Um, we're noticing, we've noticed the last couple years that room bookings seem to be getting later and later. And Chris and I have talked about this a lot. One of the things that we talked about was the year before was, I don't know if you remember, we had really extensive wind. I mean, where people were taking stuff down, tents were flying down the street. It was really, really unfortunate. And we thought that possibly might be part of the problem with the late bookings this year. And one of the things that we've um, put into place is we call all the hotels pretty much every other day going into the first two weeks before the event and we send out that list of available rooms to Chris and a few other people at the car show that they can help us fill those rooms as we get closer and we just keep updating it, updating it until the day of the event and it's it's really helped. Um, I know that some of the hotel rooms that were still open they were holding a pretty high rate so compression that's you know that's fine that's the hotel's decision to do but um, I, I did notice that with some of the final rooms that were still empty, there were like 400 a night. So one of the things that we um, just did, Shannon wrote a blog about the car show um, with Chris about you know booking early and the benefit of booking early and getting a better room rate. And so we're going to push that out probably in August once all the hotels get their 2019 room rates up. So hopefully that will help this next year fill a little earlier. We'll see how it does. One thing that always works is that really nice advance deposit, you know, 30-day advance deposit rate, something that really, you know, draws them to make that reservation. So something like that would, would be beneficial for everybody, too. I had a question. Does, does Chamber put together any, like, passport-type thing like we do to distribute um, to all the... Um, the car show participants, either the, the either the participants or people just coming to town, just because I know that we only have access to people that get into a hotel room and we give them our passport accordingly. At, at this point, I don't believe there is. We we we've had some different groups over the years help out with um, just enticing, and and we've had something like there was the passport. I think you guys had done a few years back that I think we kind of helped push along at our at our show. Um, for the most part, it's when the entrants show up, we have a table there that we let a lot of people bring and set stuff there. Um, but as far as, I think, as this has grown, obviously the web presence and everything has, has additionally grown. And we do pre-register for the following year at our show. And right now, we're showing we got about 115 pre-registered um, for next year. And so you probably will see those similar people tend to pre-register their hotel room before they leave as well. Um, and, and like Jennifer mentioned, this I think it was the rain. and We had rain on Sunday last year, and we had wind all day Saturday. So I think that tended to those people who are coming this year, they're like, well, let's wait until it gets closer to make sure we're going to have decent weather. Um, because we did see that with that rain, we, we had we had a small, very small show on that Sunday. I've, about 45 cars came out in the rain, but the majority of them, we'll see they'll stay for Sunday, but they'll stay in their hotel and check out and go do other stuff rather than park on the street if, if it's bad weather. Thank you. I, I just bring it up. That kind of goes back to the future agenda item, where we can maybe it's an opportunity to get on one message with the chamber, with with all city departments and everything. Thanks. I'd be glad to reach out to Erica. And we have another. Do we have more be higher? To sure. thank you. Come on up. Hello, um, I'm Kara Taylor, and I'm here as a board member for Morro Bay High School Athletics Department, Athletics Boosters. Um, public speaking is not my gift. That's why I have my husband. Um, but uh, last two years, I've applied for grants for the tourism grants. Um, two years ago, uh, there were two grants that were awarded, and then uh, last year, three grants were awarded. And um, the first event uh, was for uh, volleyball and cross country, had invitationals that were coming to town in September. Um, that event had approximately 1,500 attendees, 
probably 75% of those were coming from outside of the county. And uh, a new one added in December was for a basketball tournament. And for that one, um, we had about 1,000 attendees. Again, about 60% of those came in from outside of the county. And both of those events, um, these uh, spectators uh, were had to spend at least one night in town, more than likely two. And then uh, the biggest event that um, happens at the high school is the wrestling tournament, and that happens in January. And that event draws 90 schools from across the whole state. And I believe last year we had one team come from outside of the outside of California. And uh, the money for most of these events helps our teams, the individual teams. Um, they're expected to do a lot of fundraising in order to uh, enable their teams to pay for their own tournament events and also um, for their traveling. And so um, the money that you help, that you've given to the school helps the athletics department tremendously. And um, we thank you for it. And I put um, some facts on paper because I know I didn't remember everything. So you guys can review these later. Thank you. You did great. Thank you so much. We love the uh, the events that are done. These athletic events that bring in um, new people to our to our beautiful Morro Bay, but it also brings their folks. And it um, these are visitors that are going to come back again and again and again just because they came and played sports here and found our beautiful little city. Thank you. And how about the kite festival? Hi, Terry. How are you? Good morning, I'm Terry Bayes. I am the event coordinator for the Morro Bay Kite Festival this year. This is a poster that was made this year. Um, we started with new graphics for the very first time. I want to start with thanking you for your support. Your guys' support helped take the event to a three-day event and make it bigger than it had ever been before. So we started on Friday, April 27th, and um, our fiscal partner was the Friends of Morro Bay Harbor Department, um, and they helped in every way possible, helped get the kites onto the field, helped with traffic control, helped do a lot of things. We had a booth there with the Friends of Morro Bay Harbor Department where we gave away raffles, where everybody had given us um, so kindly do donations, and that really helped to, to serve as kind of an informational booth up in there and to also explain the message of the Morro Bay Har Harbor Department, what we were doing there, and to sell raffle tickets. So we estimated that 5,300 people attended the event, um, and we received $13,104.68 in in-kind donations. As always, the city of Morro Bay really pulled together to help this um, because it was basically a new, a, a new to a three-day event. We didn't have much infrastructure to go with, so um, we had to rely on the kindness of the hotels and restaurants to give us things to give away and to house and to feed our kite flyers. So the very first day was um, 
the kite fighting and um, and then a, a sunset dinner at Tognazini's um, because it was an outdoor event and the winds were gusting at 50 miles an hour. The kite flighting couldn't happen or would have chopped off somebody's head. They like to show me that because what we were supposed to do, <laughs> what kite fighting is, is they put glass on the strings and they try to cut each other out of the sky. It's a very, very popular event in Southeast Asia and, um, and then in addition they put a very long tail on a kite and the kids have to jump and run up and grab it. They did one show of that, and I said, no, I called it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to decapitate anybody. But um, KSBY showed up right as that. I had called it for wind. But we had some really nice kite flyers that came into town and did some kite flying. So we actually got the visual of two guys trying to cut each other out of the sky. And then we moved on to um, Tognazini's um, for the meal. And... Um, uh, Mark was kind enough to make us a cake. It was fabulous. And so it was outside on his patio, and people got to meet the kite flyers. They got to come say hello, and it was a very nice um, um, effort on everybody's part. We did have new sponsors. Um, I got um, some new business sponsors at Go Westy, which is a business that takes... West Falls, they're in, based in Morro Bay and make some fancy hippie cabins. Um, so they were a, a sponsor as well as PG&E. We got PG&E involved um, because we focused on the wind is power aspect of it. So what I wanted to try to do was expand it to more than just kite flying. So we brought in other things that work in the wind. We brought in kite surfers. We had sand surfers. Um, we had all sorts of other little tiny activities that helped people um, play in the wind. So um, all, both the sand surfers and the kite surfers had free tra trainer kites, or, and so it was all free to the public to go and try all of those things. Um, Children's Museum gave us uh, f uh, prizes for our PG&E, and, &E, and um, everybody up there gave us either a room or something to au auction off to, hate, to help defer the costs. So we had the kite presentations, we had the large aquatic um, kite displays. It was a super windy weekend. And when the large ones went up, they lasted about 20 minutes and then they went down. So um, it was more, you know, in lesser windier times, we could have spent more time up there. But it was, <laughs> anybody who was out there for the day, at the end, you were nice and pelted with sand. Um, we had uh, more vendors than we'd ever had before, which was nice, lots of different diversity. We had the United States. Um, uh, Air Force was there, with, um, but they got pelted so bad, and, and their, their um, easy up flew away. Uh, <laughs> the, the kite flighting, we did do kite flighting earlier in the morning on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, one of the new things we did is the STEM win competition. We did that, at, um, that was for Morro Bay, I mean that was for pg &E and based at Morro Bay High School. I'll tell you more about that. And then we had the Flying High Fish Fry, which was Saturday night. Giovanni fed our flyers and then did a very special sunset special for everybody that came to the um, kite festival, had a special thing to go and eat there with everybody else. And then we also, on Saturday, we gave um, away 300 kites um, in three hours, or 500 kites in three hours. They went like that. They were really nice kite. I mean, they were just kind of smaller kites, but the kids, we had tables set up so the kids could decorate them first, then put them up in the air and watch them crumble from the wind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so those a few minutes, we got the big ones up there. Um, we had 28 professional kite flyers. Um, they were managed by Sean Farmer, who ran this event for 10 years, and he still managed the the, the kite flyers, he had a booth there selling kites and was very, very helpful in all, getting all of this organized. Um, the American Kite Flyers Association gave us an MC, so there was somebody on the beach talking about what they were doing all the time. It says, I guess it needed explanation. Um, we did have a lot of heavy social media. It was a very, very well shared, very exciting event um, on air. We did 250 posters that were distributed all over San Luis Obispo and Santa Maria County. And we got coverage in every single local print and uh, TV and radio station. So those were the meals that were hosted. That's the kite, or the, the um, cake that Mark had made for us, which was so cool. And, um, and then, like I said, Giovanni offered a special thing to everybody that went to the kite festival and fed our, um, our kites. Whoops. 
most of the vendors that were there. Um, the aim high is the Air Force. We had face painting. We had a church. We had lots of food vendors and um, some bouncy house type of thing that was very, very well received. Uh, so this is a wind is power competition, and so the kids had to put something together that proved that they could make power with wind. So this one here is a, um, it's not Lego, it's, what's the one where you make it? Yes. Connects, thank you. She has a kid. <laughs> and so that the pinwheel on the, on the end, he took his mom's hair dryer and would push on the hair dryer and then it would counterbalance. And then the little one over there, this kid was only five years old. Um, it was a Legos he put together and it was kind of just acting as a balancing thing. So, uh, and pg and &E came out and they bought, they bring this very cool, um, kind of a display, it was as long as that table there, and it looks like a little town, and it shows you, it has little people in there, and there's a guy with big gloves on, and shows you how you can electrocute yourself, and then it does all these things explaining <laughs> how power lines work, and how electricity flows through people, and they blow it up, and it was <laughs> riveting, it was so awesome. So it was very nice, pg &E was very excited about the event, and all the press they received, when I asked them if they wanted their banners back, they said no, they're definitely doing it again next year, and they're going to build some special kites. Um, we had three, uh, 1350 tickets were sold for the jump corral. That was a series of like, we were only, he, he could, he had 20 he could have put up, but it was only safe to put five up. So um, what he did was sell for one, uh, you got a wristband and you could go on all of them all day long. And the kids were, we had several people come back the next day just because they, it was such a good price and the kids loved it so much. So um, we had 185 people try the sandboarding, 85 people tried the kite surfing, uh, 500 free kites were given out in three hours, um, 2,374 people signed up on Eventbrite, the LA Times did a travel calendar story, and NBC Bear area did a worth the trip article. Those are all the media mentions. We had a really cool thing with Dave Congleton where John Lindsay, who is a meteorologist for PG&E, got on every week and gave a wind report instead of just a weather report. So that was kind of nice. And, um, and John just really focused on every day going in and saying what the wind was going to be, which was, this is going to be a deadly weekend for flying kites. It's like, stop <laughs> saying that. Uh, <laughs> we, um, the the, the um, website and the, both the, Morro, the Friends of the Morro Bay Harbor Department put up a landing page for us and they were both very well received and had lots of mentions and likes. So, you know, again, the community really comes together for this thing. I did learn that people on that dirt lot there just will park anywhere. So next year, <laughs> I will go out and rope it all off because by, was it 10 o'clock Saturday morning, you couldn't get in or out. I mean, it was, and the fire department was like, uh, so um, lesson learned. The Morro Bay Harbor Department did come home, or come down and help us rope everything off. So if any people that came after that, it was more organized. And um, I just, I didn't know that they would just park anywhere. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was just, a, again, a coming together of the community that was, you know, really, really wonderful and nice. And um, next year, it's April 26th through the 28th. And... Um, that's all. Any questions? I just want to say thank you because the events that you are assisting us with are getting bigger and better. Everything that you're touching is getting better. Thank it was you. such a fun event too, really uh, beautiful. And to have it three days long and to have folks come back day after day, it, it's a story in itself. Thank so you. love the press and love the stories all over. So, um, so yeah. thank you again. Thank you. And the plan was to have the bigger kites flying in Coleman Park and down on all parts of town to kind of bring people there, but it was just too windy. It just wasn't safe. We'll pray for some nice, strong wind, but not outrageous <laughs> yeah, winds. Somewhere in between <laughs> gale force, and, and it was a gale force day. They, they Actually, Harbor Patrol couldn't go out. Nobody could go out. So we had some serious winds. <laughs> I'm still picking sand out of my ears. A couple things I was just going to mention on the Kite Festival. So this, like Terry mentioned, this was started by Mr. Sean Farmer from Farmer's Kite in Surrey, and he's done an amazing job. And, and Sean is at this point where he would like to now be the ambassador for the Kite Festival and come down and 
do like on-air interviews and be more of an ambassador role and not the daily management role because he has a full-time business and he has a full-time job and it's, it's just too much for him. And so what we've been working on doing is uh, moving that, it's not the ownership, it'd just be the management of the Kite Festival over to a 501C, which would be Friends of the Harbor Department. And then um, it clearly states in there that if for some reason Friends of the Harbor Department does not put on the Kite Festival, that it would transfer back to Sean so he's covered and can get it back if that happens but it takes him out of that daily management and lets him be more of an ambassador for us, which I think will be really nice on a go forward. Um, interestingly enough, so one of the things since we've become a city department is we've been trying to take these, um, there's been some grants that were given direct to businesses before, and so we're trying to clean that up and get them through a 501C or you know, the correct way to manage it. And we've been having a really hard time getting 501Cs that, can do that for us because according to their bylaws for one reason or another they can't do certain things and friends of the harbor department has stepped up so they've done all of our crawls they've done the kite festival i mean they're like whatever you need we'll do it so yeah, thankfully that's really great and we've seen great benefits from them they finished the dock from the money that they raised they've put the binoculars out now at hofbar house i don't know if you've seen those mounted out there so they're doing really good things with the money that they're raising from these events as well. So it's it's a win-win right now. And also another event that's happening with the Friends of the Heart Department and the Youth Sailing Program and the Morro Bay Maritime Museum is a marine swap meet that's going to happen at the end of the yeah. month. It'll be an annual event um, the last Saturday of June. Sounds like so a board announcement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you again. Okay. Great stuff. All right. Thank you. And now, mental marketing. So I've asked mental marketing to come today. We're on the cusp of starting our new contract in July with them. And what Marianne and I have been working through is how do we move our ROI and our KPIs to the next level in this next contract and get better reporting and better ability to track, <coughs> which is a constant you know, problem with anybody in hospitality. And so this meeting today is really um, an open meeting for all of us to just interact as she goes through things. This is not for you to listen to her whole presentation. This is an interactive presentation that we need to actively tell her what we like or don't like or how does this work and let's really work through these and see how we can make our um, KPIs better for next year. Okay, board? Good morning. Hi, Marianne Stansfield with Mental Marketing. Thank you for having me. As Jen said, um, she invited me here today to kind of go into some detail um, about how we plan to take the ROI uh, to the next level starting July 1 in this new fiscal year. <clears throat> and we're actually really excited about it. So I want to kind of talk about where we are with KPIs. So I know I've presented to this board several times about our key performance indicators, which in tourism specific indicators are measured by TOT, occupancy, average daily rate, and revenue per available room. So those numbers, of course, calculated by the city. <clears throat> And we kind of, and, and this is industry standard, mind you, that DMOs like Morro Bay kind of, you know, say, okay, we were successful this month based on those numbers. So then on the marketing side, the KPIs that we track are, for example, when we buy digital ads, we track the impressions that we purchase with the marketing dollars from Morro Bay Tourism. <clears throat> Excuse me. How many clicks we get from those ads? How many um, conversions we get from those ads? And so what that is is so someone sees an ad, maybe they don't click on it that day, but within the next 30 days they end up on our website, we can track that through the analytics, okay, and through our media partners. Um, we track the impressions that we generate through public relations and how many times they're shared on social media. Um, we track impressions on social media and so forth and clicks there as well. So the missing link, and this is, again, industry standard, not only tourism, but across the board, the missing link often in marketing is, okay, how do we track all of these impressions and all of the marketing um, KPIs to all the tourism results, okay? There's been this missing link, and that is what we're going to talk about today. We have a product um, from one of our tourism partners 
towards the media partners that is that kind of missing link. So, so why don't I just jump in here um, <clears throat> and, and talk about what we're going to implement this year. So ADARA travel um, data ecosystem. These, so ADARA is a tourism focused media partner. They, they offer an advertising program. We do buy ads through them and have um, for the past couple years. This is an, a different product. This is called ADARA Impact, what I'm going to talk about today. But how they're able to produce these kind, the, the tracking that I'm going to share with you is because they have this, what they call their data ecosystem. So they partner with um, tourism companies, huge ones, international ones. So American Airlines, um, United, all the, all the big brand hotels, Marriott, you know, Best Western and so forth. And you can see the plethora of partners that they have. And they, they establish contracts with these media partners and they say, okay, well, you'll share with us your proprietary information and then we can share that with our data partners. So it kind of goes, you know, that whole um, privacy sharing Facebook thing that's going on. You know, um, it kind of it goes along those lines where they get all the data from these partners but they don't share the personal information, right? They don't share names, they don't share, e share emails, they don't share all of that. But these are solid partners. This is proprietary information, and it's accurate information. Okay, so that's that's how Adora gets their data. So, how does that work? So, Adora has a global footprint. <clears throat> they track over 950 million air bookings, airline bookings, and and um, hotel bookings every year. Um, as you can see, they're an international network um, and heavily. Um, um, they, have, they track over 750 million monthly active travelers. So what, um, what really is outstanding about this partnership that we're developing is that they also track oops, um, search data, booking data, and profile data. So while they don't share, so profile data meaning they don't share the names and email addresses, but they'll share, you know, we find out what their age, the ages of the of the person booking, or where they live, or if they didn't book here, where they did book, that kind of thing. Um, so as you can see here, um, they, we can find out deep visitor insights and behavior data. So where they're fr coming from, where they're going, other destinations that they search aside from Morro Bay, um, when and where they book, um, are they business or leisure, um, did they see our ads and visit our website, their age and income, as I mentioned, the hotel rate, and the number of nights that they stay, which is huge. Um, so how, does, how do we do that? So um, basically, we track all of our digital ads that we do, not only with Adara, but with other media partners like TripAdvisor, like when we run ads on social media, when we run ads through Google AdWords, when we send out eBlast that Liz and, and Jen send out every month to that database of 20,000 people. <clears throat> what Adara has set up for us is, and all of their, all of their um, clients, is a way for us to create our own pixels. If you guys are familiar with pixels, I know I'm kind of getting a little micro, but it's basically a tracking, a digital tracking source where we can create it through their dashboard I can create a specific pixel, and, and um, Liz can attach it to the e-blast that she sends out, and it will track everybody that responds to that email. We don't have that right now. Um, we can, so we can track her email back to who goes to the website, who actually books, who books a flight, and, and then it gives us their profile information. Um, that's pretty, pretty amazing. So that's what this is about. So this is what we measure with all of that. Like I said, the hotel bookings, we measure website visits, um, and, and so on and so forth. Just to update you guys, this is actually a paid feature that we're putting into. It's already budgeted into for next year, but it is a, a paid. It's it not just paid. something they're doing for free for anybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, we have to pay for the data. <laughs> Um, and, and to that point, Jen, is so even if we were to, let's say, hire a, a research firm to go and research and spend, you know, X amount of dollars annually to, to, 
for, to have them figure out this data or do focus groups or what have you, we still couldn't get this type of detailed data if we paid a focus group to, or a, a, a search agency to do it. Um, so this is a pretty unique um, product. Um, so how do, how do, how do we uh, know how to move the needle? Basically, we're going to find out from our media partners which ones are driving the most bookings. So we have a campaign. We run ads on TripAdvisor. We run ads on Adara. We do social media campaigns and so on and so forth. E-blast through LA Magazine, LA Times. We can track every single piece of, of media out there uh, through this program. And we can find out who's producing the most bookings. Um, we can find out which creative executions uh, and what campaigns are driving the most bookings. Um, the revenue per impression, how much are you spending before you get that booking? Um, the length of stay, which is so difficult to track. Um, so we're super excited about this feature because it is one of our objectives and has been one of our objectives is to really extend that length of that average length of stay. Um, and then mar um, origin markets. So what markets are staying longer and which ones ha are spending more? Marianne, real quick, just yes. a quick question back to the RevPAR impression. How much are you spending before you get that? Are you measuring that in advertising dollars or how is that? Right. When so you're saying how much you're spending. Exactly. So we can track what ads are converting booking to bookings. And then, so then the revenue per impression. So, so then we just do a calculation to figure out how many impressions are we spending or buying before we get that booking and, and what is the tracking system of, for that? You know, how did we get there? You're welcome. Please feel free to ask questions as we go. Yeah, um, yeah I might as well do it now while, sure. they, while they come up. Um, the, are, are we able to uh, uh, add the, such a pixel to really any paid advertising then? Yes. Uh, not Digital. Digital paid advertising. Can we, can we pay to have that pixel added to um, organic? Organic. So, so either 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 um, either their journalistic pieces or or other other types of impressions that aren't necessarily us paying on AdWords or TripAdvisor. So that's a good question, and I want to make sure I'm understanding what your question is. So. I'm going to give an answer, and you but, tell me if it's, well, the, if it's answering your I, question. I guess, I guess what I'm saying is that this is an amazing thing, but, yeah. I don't, I, but at this point, I'm not sure that we have all the mechanisms that are ready for that pixel. And so we have this email blast. We have a website that is going to get revamped. Uh, uh, what, are the, uh, what are the other ways that we can, uh, like whether it's through any kind of tra uh, traditional media that we can pixelate that or maybe get our hoteliers on board with pixelating their booking page or something like that? Well, I mean, I think that, um, I mean, I'm happy to talk to our media partner about co-op opportunities and actually I have mentioned it to them. They are looking into how they could potentially do that. That I think they... Um, um, they might even be in a beta a stage trying to figure that out. Um, but it would be a co-op where the, the hotels, well, I don't know if maybe the, the bid would pay for the co-op for the hotels if that's even an option. Um, but right now, basically, the client is the city of Moore Bay, so it's the assets that the city of Moore Bay owns that we can track, right? So it's all social media, it's Google AdWords, it's all of the media, um, all of the money that's being spent on media digital media will be trackable. So um, organic stuff, what we can track organically is um, whoever basically ends up on our website will be able to, f to get their profiles. So that's something new um, as far as owned media that you guys have um, that will kind of take it up to that next level. Um, am I answering your question? I yeah, I'm just brainstorming other opportunities sure, to, sure. to use this feature that seems like it's above and beyond our, our uh, we need to meet them halfway, so I'm trying to figure out what other ways we can contribute to to maximize the, the absolutely. I totally agree, and and I had a meeting recently um, with them about and talking about that um, as well. And so, just, Sean, I think that's it's a really good point, and that might be a year two process because we need to show that this is it's a lot of money. So we need to show that this is working, that it's we're seeing benefit from it. And then maybe year two, we look at, do we want to pay for hotels to, right. because right, like right now we right. pay Jackrabbit every month for the hotels. 
I, I'm actually saying the opposite, that we might not be ready to pay that amount if we don't have the right things to track. So I, it's more of a chicken and the egg. I, I think it's all about tracking our paid media right now. It, because right now, our big thing is if we place an ad, which is like, almost $300,000 of our budget a year is placed media. Mm -hmm. We don't have the ability to say, okay, we did an ad for 4th of July, and here's how many people booked for 4th of July. Right. We don't have that direct tracking, and that's, the, that's really the big missing link, that if we can get that resolved this year, I'll be thrilled. That's right. a big, it's a really big deal. But I like your idea for maybe year two. Totally. I, to lever how in any way that we can leverage this, I, we will definitely stay on top of that and research that, to your point. Um, yeah, it, it, absolutely. And um, so, um, so going going on to our next slide here. <clears throat> so I just want to show you some of the dashboard information. Um, and I know it's hard to read. I apologize about that. Um, I tried to make it as big as possible. But basically, this is what it looks like. You know, when we go into the dashboard. This is some of the insights that it's giving us. So it's showing um, that revenue number there, two million dollars. This is one of their big clients. Um, case studies, but um, it shows the revenue. It shows um, next to that, actually, let's see if I can, right here, it shows how many rooms were booked. Right here, oh, I don't know what happened. Um, I'm sure he'll come out and, and help. Thanks, Jen. Um, but right next to that, it showed the, the flights booked. So, um, for example, Adara, two of their partners are United Airlines and um, uh, American Airlines. That represents 97% of the uh, seats that fly in and out of SBP, San Luis Obispo uh, Regional Airport. So we can track um, how many people book a flight out of SBP who have seen our advertising. Um, we don't know necessarily if they end up booking in Morro Bay, and we can only track the bookings through the flags, so um, through like Best Westerns and, and, and the branded um, uh, rooms, um, which represent about 20% of the rooms in Morro Bay. So, um, so from that, we can kind of extrapolate. So, for example, let's go back one, I think, here. So, actually, I have some data. This is what this is here. Um, so currently, like I mentioned, we are we buy advertising through Adara Marketing. This is a different product. This is Adara Impact, and I, this might get a little confusing. I apologize. Um, but so for this last year, this last fiscal year through May, we have had um, 370 um, uh, people book through Adara that we have tracked to, back to our ads. And as a result of that, we've generated $25,000 in revenue that we can track, okay? So we already have some proven results from Adara, um, and so that's how we, why we feel confident in this product. Um, but to give you an example, so if we're showing $25,000 in generated revenue, and that's just from one media partner, right? That's just Adara, so that doesn't include TripAdvisor at this point in time. It doesn't include any of our emails. It doesn't include any of our social media, right? Because that currently is not tracking bookings, okay? So just from Adara paid media, we can track $25,000 in revenue. Well, that's only 20%, right? So you multiply that times five, right? And then that is the projected revenue that we've generated through that media buy. Does that make sense, everybody? What, what was the money spent on those ads? Right. So the money is spent on advertising. So um, it's spent on digital ads that we run that... So, okay, it's a really good question, actually. Um, so we buy advertising with Adora right now. So when they run the ads, they run on all of their partner sites, on tourism-specific sites, on United Airlines, on you know uh, American Airlines, on sites where people are already searching to travel, right? And so then once somebody sees our ad, and then they go back to our website or they book something, Adara has that data because he, they have that proprietary relationship with all of their data partners, right? So that data, they get, that's how they get that data. And again, I'm going super micro, so I apologize ahead of time, but if you have questions, just ask me. Um, so, so 
year to date through May, we know for a fact that people who have seen our ads through all of the Adara partners have booked hotel rooms at, that amount to revenue of $25,000. $25, so we multiply that times five, and that's $125,000 that we can show as a result of spending $45,000 for the year with, with uh, Adara. Everybody with me? Okay. Okay, and where does the five, the five multiplier come from? That's the five multiplier is because the um, Adara can track 20% of our hotel bookings. Okay. Okay. Chris, just to bring you up to date, Adara is specifically a hospitality network. That's all they, that's their field mm -hmm. that they manage in is hospitality right. related sites, period. Okay. Right. From that, that first page I showed you guys, those are all their media partners. Yeah, all their hospitality partners. So, questions? Uh, that, that calculation isn't saying they're generating us any revenue. They're just saying that we, 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 they were, we were able to successfully track 20%, and those were the dollar amounts. Right. So, of the 20% that they tracked was $25,000 exactly. So, if we were to extrapolate from that and, and project out that the potential of it, that's how you would do it. And, and thus, that would be one twenty-five of a out of... This is gross, not e revenue. It's just revenue, yeah. So, so in that sense, then projecting that out, we that would only be able to track roughly uh, uh, twelve percent of our revenue. Well, right. Best so, case. right. So, so okay. But, but what we're talking about is connecting what we're specifically doing with our advertising back to how it's generating revenue, yeah, and contributing to those total numbers, yes. And mind you, I'm sorry, one more thing I want to add because that was a good point. So mind you, that number is only what we're spending with Adara right now. So with this new product that Jen and we're presenting today, we're going to now be able to track not only the Adara digital ads, but also TripAdvisor and also all of our social media and our Google AdWords and et cetera. So that number is going to grow. What I was going to comment on is that the hardest part for you guys and for any marketing firm is to, to figure out your return on your investment. Right. To you know to get the data that you that we need to prove that what you're doing and what we're asking you to do is actually working. Correct. Um, this is going to give us some incredible you know, demographic and psychographic information of who's booking, how they're booking, where they're booking. Um, to Sean's point, it would be really nice if we could get 100% of every hotelier in town to be able to have that pixel on there so we could see really a real real picture so in the future i think that is something that we should look at you know year two mm -hmm. um and even as we move forward i think we should be asking those questions um how does that work uh, but the information you know and for me it's so much about conversion you know it's are they looking or are they booking you know and those that information for me is critical as well um but everything i've read about what we're getting into, this is state of the art, and huge DMOs across the, the nation are using them across mm -hmm. the world. And so to get us into that, you know, to get us to that level is, is just great. And so thank you for, for bringing this up. It's really You're, great thank you. Thank you so much. I, you know, I, I, we work with a lot of other tourism accounts and have um, other, you know, marketing, you know, industries that we work with, and that is probably the biggest source of frustration you know, when, especially when we're working with a board and then city council, and it's like, okay, how do these numbers jive? How are we showing that this is actual return on investment? It's just, there's no there there a lot of times. And people aren't inside the box of marketing like I am and like Jen is, it's, it can be really difficult to kind of get it. And so this is one of that missing link piece that can connect it and, and hopefully help, you know, when we're just giving the numbers on stuff, people are like, okay, I get it now. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to help help with so it's a start uh, if so I can ask one more question on that the sure example fourth of july weekend so we put out some ads on fourth of july weekend um i think it'd be safe to say we all believe we're going to sell out our properties fourth of july weekend whether you put the ads out or not um but what those ads are going to do is is help create the image right get people here um they may not come fourth of july but they may not come till next september next october we're probably not really able to track that distinctive, I would assume, to know that this person who shows up in November <coughs> first found out about us through right. a Fourth of July ad. That those are just right. Well, we have a 90-day window. So if okay. somebody sees a, an ad, 
you know, and then 90, within that next 90 days, they go and they book or they do something, we will be able to track that. The long term is probably way, way more expensive than we can afford. If, if they even do that, I, I, I didn't ask. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, just, just so that um, you guys know, we do a lot of the event advertising through social media, um, through e-blasts and stuff like that. Um, so we'll be able to, we don't spend a lot of high dollars on, spe on specific um, events. Um, some, and to your point, especially the ones that tend to book out, you know, we try to spend more of our, our money on the ones that need help and on pushing midweek business. Um, but so the, the campaigns that we do where we spend higher dollars are going to show more, more return. If that makes sense, yeah. I think there, I think there's also an opportunity uh, if we have this data to uh, to from a marketing standpoint, we can look at uh, lagging indicators in some shape or form and see, like, look, if if our activity in July 2018 is skyrocketing and suddenly you know November bookings are, are going up, or even July of next year, and mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it takes a lot of analysis to kind of find where, where how that long-term play is, is panning right. out. But I, if we have more of that hard data, it's possible at least, or, or to make an attempt at it, um, which I, 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 I know when I look at numbers, if someone has attempted to analyze them in a way that seems somewhat reasonable, even if that's totally faulty, I appreciate that more than kind of qualitative, subjective, Right. Vague buzzwords. <laughs> right. You know, and I love data, too, and I love analyzing data. I'm kind of geeky like that. But so I, I'm looking forward to be able to say, to analyze the data and say, okay, we're, you know, this is where we're getting the bookings from. This is where we're getting the higher, higher dollar bookings, you know, where they're spending more. Um, and then we can fine tune our marketing approach. Jen and I can, you know, and the team can put our heads together and say, okay, this is where the dollars are. That's where the marketing is going to go, you know. And so, and this, these are the campaigns that are working. Let's fine tune them. And, and, you know, these are the messages that they're responding to. We will be able to track, um, you know, what data on the website is actually um, leading to conversions. So Marianne, <clears throat> to go into what Sean and Chris were both asking a little more, um, can we see that they looked, they looked, they looked, and then they finally booked on a specific timing? Mm -hmm. Can it go back and show that you know they looked at July and then they looked at something in August? But I mean, part of yeah. that is, did it? You know, they might have a really fond interest in Morro Bay, but it doesn't fit into their. Um, timing. Timeline, yeah. So it'd be really nice to know if they looked at our stuff five times and then finally booked something specific. Is, is it that detail that it would break yeah. it down? Yeah. Well, so so to the 90-day, yeah, to in that 90-day window. So actually right here, I know, again, you can't see it, but right here, these um, graph, these bars, that is the look-to-book ratio that we're going to be able to get. And it's generally right now, well, this isn't our data, but I think it's around 36 days right now from, from look-to-book. So that kind of data we'll be able to get as well. Um, and so it's within that 90-day window, which is nice. And I think that's that's generally the case. Um, but I think, you know, if it's a year out, if somebody's just kind of searching and just kind of browsing, and then they don't book to the next year, we can't track that they browsed a year ago, but we can certainly track, you know, when they go back to our site and then they actually book, right? When they come back around. If it's within a 90-day thing, we can track that. But, so... So um, just a couple more kind of um, dashboard pages that, um, that are really exciting to me. I don't know if they're going to be exciting to you, but um, so media impact. So again, um, <clears throat> this is showing the number of travelers, the length of stay, the average daily rate that we're getting um, from these travelers. Oh, I think we lost it. Um, at any rate, these, the rest are, well, I do need to have it come up again, so we'll fix that in a second. But um, activity by campaign. So <clears throat> we can see, it'll it, you know, give us a list of like, okay, here's their emails that went out. Here's the, um, uh, so let me back up. So for right now, we're running a midweek campaign. So when we create the pixels to track all the data, we, we title it midweek campaign. So we can then track just the midweek campaign. We can track it by the emails that, that pushed out that message. We can track it by the social media. We can track it by it. So it lists it down. And we can break out how many clicks from each media 
uh, source? How many conversions from each media source? How many bookings from each media source? And that's, again, going back to how we can then fine tune our marketing and how we're spending the dollar. I mean, the, this is such valuable information. Is, is there a finite list of tags that we can assign to those type of things? Or can we come up with 50 of those type of tags? And then if we have a midweek campaign, we can say midweek off season, midweek off season, January, midweek, like, you know? Yes, okay. we can. And so, they don't. They recommend to keep it more kind of um, just like so. If we have um, if we have a midweek campaign for two months, we just call it midweek campaign, and then we can break it out by calendar, right? We can just pull the data by the month, okay? Um, so, but there's all kinds of ways. To your point, yes. If we want to go deep, 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 we can totally do that. Absolutely. So, like for example, if we are running this midweek campaign, or let's say in the shoulder season campaign that we run, if we run a, want to run a couple different sets of ads to see what message really, we can do that. So then we can call it, you know, shoulder season campaign, you know, adventure message, shoulder campaign, you know, food message, or what, whatever. Yeah. That, that seems like the kind of thing that to that to have the uh, the ten or twelve tags that we standardize on the upfront, so that in a year or two years or 10 years, no matter who the marketing firm is, who the, who, like whatever that data is, those oh, it'll tags still be will there. Remain the same. Oh, they will. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just depends if the campaign changes. Like if you know the. Show well, if it's a one-off one, yeah, it's like a. Right. But yeah, but there would be. If it's the same of, thing year yeah. after year, absolutely, we can track that data annually. Yeah. Because sure. this is really an asset, not just a service. Oh sure, absolutely. This this is long term. Yeah. So, so Marianne, yes. and, and I may be a little dense about this, so I'm trying to understand, you stated earlier that that right now we can track 20% of the bookings into hotels. Correct. Right. And you're saying with, uh, and that's with the current product we're using with Adara. And with this, when you're saying we can track, you know, from the media to the booking, is that again only if they're booking through some of the major sites like TripAdvisor, Expedia, or whatever? Right. Um, and I assume we would talk at least, uh, you know, how do you tie in the moralbay.org and how, you know, what if people, you know, see that ad campaign and then they go, oh yeah, that's cool, I want to go to that, and then they just go Google hotel rooms in Morro Bay um, and see, oh, look, there's the Estero Inn. That looks cool. I want right. to book there, um, and I'm, I'm going to give that you know that business to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so how do, would an, a, a transaction like that be tracked? Right. So, so we the the data that we'll get is only data from their partners. So if they go outside of the partner network, then you're right. That yeah, isn't until trackable. Until we maybe right. move to phase two where we try to get some coordination. Right. And okay. so so what they're doing is, because I asked them about, okay, how do, you know, is there a possibility you'll ever be able to track non-flag? And that, and that is actually what they're working on that's in beta right now. So that, um, okay. they're, yeah, they're trying to figure out ways to track the, the non yeah, the right. non-brands. Okay, good. So, Thank you yeah. for that. Is there any large um, booking service that's not under their purview that we're missing? Like, they is there anybody significant that we're going to miss? Right. I, not to my knowledge, not like but I'm happy to ask somebody that big. Right. Okay. I'm happy to ask. I think. Um, I mean, I think they're really well covered, but there, there, there might be some out there that they're just. Not interested in you yeah. Know, Plus, playing. it's not somebody that's you know one of the major bookers. Yeah, I guess is my concern. Yeah, it, it might also be really interesting to know if they have Airbnb and VRBO as as their clients because that information would be super valuable to everyone. I think that's a great question. Yeah, I will find out for sure. Boy, I'm just dropping stuff. My fingers are freezing. That's why. I, thank you so much. My fingertips. I can't even feel them. Um, okay, so um, let me just make a note here real quick on that. Okay. Okay, so I really appreciate all your questions today, you guys. This is really great. I'm, I'm like, I know Jen and I are super excited about it, so sharing this with you is really, is really cool. Um, so, um, Marianne, real quick, are you able sure. to, uh, can we get 
this PowerPoint sent to us so we can really look at the sort of the data pages. I know that they're not ours, but at least it'll give us give the board an indication of really being able to see what mm -hmm. we're going to be right. what you're going to be looking at, what yeah. we're going to be getting from you. Yeah, it's going to be part of the minutes. Great. Beautiful. Yeah, and just keep in mind our numbers are are completely different than these numbers. Um, but um, so <clears throat> I think I just went over this page. Let's see how we do here. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh, okay. So let's see. I think I might have already gone over this one. Um, this is origin breakdown. So yeah, so the origin breakdown is just, you know, where people are, are booking from, where they're coming from, um, and how many clicks they are. Again, going back to what is, you know, where is our, our target audience coming from and who is spending the dollars, you know, trying to get that um, ADR up. Um, go ahead to the next one here. Traveler profile, we talked about this. So this is age um, and um, household income, that kind of stuff. Two years ago, Jen and I spent probably, you know, well, I guess not too much, like a couple hundred bucks, maybe a thousand on getting reverse profiles from the 20,000 people they have in their database currently. And so that was really great um, information to help us kind of fine tune the marketing that we did. But getting that kind of data in real time like this is just, it, it is incredible, yeah. So um, let's see if I can. I'll go ahead to the next one, yeah. Um, market. So yeah, so this one, um, booking origins. Um, and then we also can find out. So let's say somebody sees our ad, and then we don't track them to booking here, but they book somewhere else. Let's say they book Santa Barbara, or they book um, Monterey or Pismo. We can track that data. So we'll be able to say, OK, they're not booking here. They're booking here and here. So you know, how can we compete better, and, and so on and so forth. Um, which I think is super cool. And then, go ahead. Thank you. And then this is the website. This is um, the dashboard of our website number. So this, is, this would be like looking at morobay.org and looking at um, how many site visits, how many searches, how many bookings that have come through our website. So it's like getting data in real time. It, it's just, it's just going to be, we're, we're just, you know, I don't want to oversell it, but I, I know that we've had good results already. I feel confident in this product, so that's why we're pretty pretty jazzed. Is one of the features <laughs> something that allows us to dump Jackrabbit immediately? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, we're going to keep Jackrabbit. Yeah, well, well, we'll be able to track Jackrabbit still through Jackrabbit. That's not a media partner with Adar. That's separate. Um, so, um, But I will, I will ask um, my, our rep about if there's any, you know, big you know, partners that aren't showing, like you, like you said, and um, if they track Airbnb and that kind of stuff. So. Jackrabbit's pretty right. minimal. It's 1200 a month. Mary, and I'm confused. A while ago, I understood the numbers we were looking at or could look at were illustrative. Yes. But the, 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 this slide is real real numbers? No, this is, no, it, there still is illustrative. So everything's illustrated, okay. Right, Thank but you. this would be basically, they actually, so once we get it all plugged in as of July 1, we, we can look at a dashboard like this and it'll be showing our actual, instead of like Google Analytics, we can get tourism related analytics. Tourism specific um, analytics versus Google. Google gives great analytics, but it's, you know what I mean, it's, it's more generic. Um, this, is specific, this would be kind of the same thing, Google Analytics, but it's showing us the bookings related to the people that have seen our advertising, um, the searches, the number of flights that were booked. Um, another thing, and I, I need to talk to Jen about this, but what's really cool is that we can track how many flights were booked to SBP, San Luis Obispo Regional Airport, by people who have seen our advertising. And that number is pretty, so again, let me go back to the numbers I have. So <clears throat> through May, we've had, that we can track, 984 nights, flights booked to SBP, they've stayed for 984 nights after they've seen our advertising. But ironically, we can only show like 200 rooms booked, so we don't know exactly if they stayed more obey, but there's a good chance they booked a room that they don't track. Does that make sense? Yeah. So but we, can, we can track how many people are flying into the airport, how many flights we're generating from our advertising, which is huge. And if we want to, we can even include people flying into Los Angeles and San Francisco if we want to broaden that out. And that's something you and I will have to talk about if we want to do. So it would basically be somebody saw our ad, and then they booked a flight to LAX. 
You know what I mean? Um, that we're not tracking right now. Um, but if we do that and we go bigger, we won't. It doesn't break it all out, so we won't. You know so I mean? on that, can yeah. we? Let's say they look at our ad. What about? Did they also look at an ad for Paso or a SoCal ad? Is there a way to sh to see that? Because they might look at our ad, but they might be looking at our competitive set to come into the county, and then sure. where are they actually stay might not be Morro Bay. No, we don't know where they stay. You're right. right. So we don't so know. You can't track all those. So we can't. Tra we would have to have pixels on their ads. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's just pixels on pixels on our ads. Um, you know, I, I think it'd be rare to see our ad by Paso's ad by Pismo ad any, on any site. They could maybe see it on at different times. You know, I, I don't know that that's interesting. I'll, I'll kind of delve deeper. I do into think that. it would be worth, I'll talk with SoCal and see if when they're going to do social posts on, and they only do them on very specific things like avocado margarita or something big. If they're going to push our event, I would, I would yeah. love to see if they'll put pixels in it for us. That and also, or if they would share, well, I guess, yeah, okay, yeah, let's talk about that. Because I can create pixels for them. If they'll do it, yeah. That'd be if great. they'll do it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're, we're, uh, in the same vein as the airport tracking, um, I think there might be an opportunity. I'm not sure how much, if any, we're spending on uh, mobile specific ads, uh, especially to uh, drive markets that are within a day that would basically end up in a one night booking for Morro Bay but that might be another opportunity to track like a, a four hour away um, mobile ad right for basically for same day booking for sure for sure yeah we definitely so when the digital ad buys that we do it includes mobile mobile ready um, sites that we're on so um, I'll make a note of that And then we can track, of course, the origin, so we know how far out they are. Okay. So, uh, is this exciting? Well, I've got a, I, I've got a thought. It's really exciting. I've got a thought. I know that um, you know, Adara is really huge. They're big. Yeah. Now, can we possibly pressure some of our partners, like Jackrabbit, to join them? Can we ask Adara to? try to add them as a partner? I'm just thinking, if they're our biggest booking thing through our site, right. there's a lot of data we're just not seeing, and if they would become a partner with, you know, just, just a thought. You know, you how know do what? we get I mean, more data right. into the money we're spending with Okay, so I do know, so we will be able to track, so we'll have pixels on every single page of ours in the, um, on the website. And so that's a great question, actually, Charlie, to, um, I don't know that we would have that kind of leverage to have them merge, right? But I think that um, we could, if we could get our pixels on on the um, Jackrabbit booking pages, then maybe we'd be able to track it. So that's a good, that's a really good point. You know what else we might be able to do is put pixels in our events that are posted on the SoCal website. Might be a way to get into their, instead of just putting a link to our event maybe we can do a specific pixel for the event that's posted on their site oh yeah absolutely and that so way we can track it through and see who's who's coming through and, SoCal website. and who our referrals are right because yeah. then that would come in as referral traffic so um i'm just trying to think we can put pixels on our landing page is that what you're saying that we know is specific to no we so we upload our events mm -hmm. to the SoCal website yeah. yeah so when we upload it can we attach a pixel to it no because it would have to be attached to the actual page on their site. Oh. And then, you know, they would have to do that. And I'm, I mean, I guess we're going to ask. So them. it has to be on their site. Okay. It, it would be on their site. Is them doing it a matter of, uh, so if we, if we have the contract with them and we can get our partners who, even though that's not our site, but we kind of own that content in a way. Well, we pay for it. I, yeah, exactly. So I, I, I see no reason why. It, you know, if we're paying for a landing page elsewhere, it, it's essentially a Facebook post, which we own that. Well, I'm sorry, that's debatable. But um, and in in that same vein, if this is the Morro Bay Tourism Board and we are a business improvement district, and we are in this contract, then I think that you could make a pretty good case that any hotel landing pages that wanted to opt in to the, to the pixel, I bet that we can get that into the contract. I, I bet that that would pass, even though it's not our landing page. <coughs> Excuse me. You know what? I mean, we can create, we have the, we have access to, 
um, creating as many pixels as we want. And so I will talk to my our rep about that because maybe we can create a pixel for each hotel and then say, here's your pixel, put this on your homepage, your booking page or whatever. And um, I have to think that through kind of. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, I, I will talk specifically about how we can use this, this, this product in, in as many ways as possible with our, you know, with our hotel partners for sure. Um, this is really great brainstorm, you guys. I really appreciate it. This is good. So, um, one I more think, question. When, of course, what's the process? What, what's the time frame for you getting? You know, it's launching July one. So yeah. So we have. So Moby has the Pixel. Moby is the current you know updater of the site. They have the, the Pixel that's going to go on every single page on the on the morobay.org site, and then any new campaigns that we're generating, which is actually that's a really great segue into my next topic. Um, so any new campaigns that we generate. Or uh, that are going to be continuing running on July one, we'll we'll pixel all of those ads. So basically, when we buy an ad, you know, with, through TripAdvisor, I'll be like, okay, here's all of our ads, and this is you know the link, and then please put this pixel on every single ad when you post it. Um, and so, um, so that's July one. Yeah. yeah. And I'm and I don't know. Maybe you're going to get to this. So I'm looking at the proposed budget, and and where, what is the cost of this to us, and where is it come? What bucket is it coming out of? It's coming out of me the media bucket. Media, and it's about okay. twenty thousand. Yeah. Okay. On that same thing, Maggie. Just so you know, on this new contract, part of our negotiation was a lower um, commission to metal marketing. So they've lowered from 15 down to 12%, which saves us about 33000 a year. Mm -hmm. So um, it's being put to good use good. for sure. Yeah. Well, we like you guys, you know. Um, so, um, sure, yeah, we can go to the next one. So um, Q&A, so just, I guess, one final, um, if you guys have any extra, any questions before we go to the next topic. Uh, real quick, you said launching July 21st. It's already launched. This new additional items is being launched July 21st. We're July 1st. with Adara in some fashion now. Right. So July 1 is um, when this, the it's called Adara Impact. So all of this new tracking um, um, data uh, program or product, I should say, will start. But yeah, we, we have ads running throughout Ad Adara's networks currently. Those are kind of two different products, if you will. So we run ads on all the different hospitality networks. Now this is going to show us all of our tracking. So maybe one thing we should talk about before we leave the subject is how do we want this reported out from mental? How often do we want it reported out so that we're all thinking the same thing? Sure. Um, so it starts July 1. What do you, what are you thinking as far as... Does, if we'll is have it every data. two months, do we sit down and look at how we're tracking? Or Well, I mean, I'm happy to report it out every month. I mean, it's going to be a buildup, obviously, over time um, of the numbers and the data will build. Um, so I'm happy to report out monthly. I don't think that's – and just include it in our um, monthly report. Or do you think that's too, too frequent? Board, any thoughts on it? I just, I just Or by campaign. You know yeah. what we could do it is by campaign. Well, what's the amount of data? What kind of time is it going to take to look at it with some reasonable Sounds care like every month or every two months? Yeah, I think I think every two months months is fine. I mean, I'm probably going to check it as we as you know on a regular basis because I'll be able to know in real time what ads are working, what ads are not working. You know, should we fine tune this campaign mid midway? So, I mean, I'll be checking it regularly. Um, and then Jen and I will fine tune it as we go, and then maybe report out to you guys the numbers by campaign, um, if that if that works for you guys. Uh, you know. It see, it seems that a, a period of time is probably easier to analyze than a, than a given campaign. I would think. I don't. Know. I would also think monthly would be good initially, and then sure. we might find that it's too yeah. much, and then we could. Lower yeah, I, I mean, I kind of, I kind of feel like, I mean, we're reporting these numbers out monthly already. You know, like the, the, um, for example, the website numbers. You know, so if we can maybe 
you know, I mean, it'll be additional information for you guys. I know you probably already have information overload every month, but um, if we kind of just add it into the way we have it set up now, we would be doing that monthly, like on the website numbers, and then I report out campaign numbers, you know, anyway, as we go along. So if we do both, and maybe, guys, it'll give you a nice snapshot of kind of, you know, how, how it's going. How does that sound? Why don't we start um, at the end of August, I'm thinking, because that'll give us, so we start July 1. I don't think reporting at the, at the end of July is going to work. I think we need to skip sure. the first month would be my, and we're, you know, summer months we don't advertise a huge amount anyway, so I think that's a okay time of year. I'm okay with that, skipping that. Sure. And so we'll report in the August, that'd be the third week of August. So you report July numbers in the third week of August meeting. Does that work? Mm -hmm. And so we'll just, that's how we'll start rolling. And then we'll just, I have to look at it on my side too. And how much time is it going to take me to analyze these and put them into place? And I'm, I'm a one man band. So <laughs> need to again, if the, well, pages, if the pages that they're producing really that give us simple, that, uh, that exactly. that's going to oh, yeah. be key to how all that data is read and, you know, absorbed yeah. and. Yeah, and I'll do the analysis and all of that and present to Jen so you're not spending extra time right. on that, you know. Um, I'm happy to do that. That's kind of how we've been doing, that's how we work together currently. This is just kind of a new, another level of reporting, but it's very similar to what we've already been doing, quite frankly. But we do Perfect. need some of that data to populate, Jen, to your point. Okay. And in June, we won't even, it won't, when you report out in July, we won't even have the data, so... And, and ton tonally speaking, I can only speak for myself, but if because this is kind of a work in, in, in progress, I'm all for like transparency, honesty, this is working, this is not working. Yep. That to me is so much more valuable than than any kind, than the impressions and clicks and calling that gospel. you know right. so I, 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 just for me, I, I, I think this is a, such a good opportunity and to say something's not working is a win, not not a loss to me. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. So thank you guys. I appreciate hanging in there with all the details and so forth. So, so, um, so on to um, our next screen. Thank you, sir. Um, Highway one opening and branded outreach. So, yay! Great news. We've all probably heard that they're rushing. They're pushing up the opening of Highway one to July. And so Jen and I, pardon me, end of, end of July. Um, so Jen and I, um, July 27th to be specific. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, so we're looking at <clears throat> some budget um, that we have from this year that we want to, um, that we plan to use to uh, push um, out some, some branded ads to celebrate that news. Let me um, give kind of a background really quick sure. before we get into too much of that. So um, with the road opening, it's not the normal totally open. We still have the signal closure at the other end. It's It was in place before the slide at Mud Creek, so it's still there. So we'll still have some stop and go traffic, but this is a really great start. It will go down to one lane in certain areas. So. I'm part of a committee that is the unincorporated bid plus the SoCal uh, group, and we've been meeting regularly. And we started meeting before they announced the July uh, new date. So we've been talking about what do we do, how do we push this out and, and gain those people back so that you guys understand county numbers. The national visitors to Slow County are up 10%. International visitors are down 10%. So that's a 20-point swing since Highway 1 has been closed, which is really, really significant. So the focus of that group is international guests. It's not about you know, our friends in Fresno, our friends in L.A. that are coming up. They're not going down Highway 1. We need long-term international visitors. So I don't want you to expect that the road opens on the 27th and on the 20th you're seeing bookings. This is international guests. It's long-term business. So... That's why I asked Marianne, let's take that. We have this little pot of extra money. Let's push it out to international guests and let's start building that up. That'll be on top of what I'm doing with this other group and what Visit California is also doing. I, I don't think Visit California is going to do a big hurrah we're reopen because it's not fully 100% open both both lanes all the time. So they're, they're hedging their bet in case there's another problem. It's kind of where they're positioning a little bit, but... We'll see. I'll, I have another meeting next week, and we'll know more, and I'll, I'll report out to you guys on that. 
Jen, those numbers were for Slow County? Yes. I also saw um, the gentleman that I work with at Hearst Castle. I saw him a few days ago, and he told me since Highway 1 has been down that their ticket sales are down by over 100,000 tickets, which is really significant, just to give you an idea of impact that we're talking about. <clears throat> Thanks, Jen. For that background, so um, so as Jen mentioned, SlowCal has reported that their international travel is down 10% in 2017, um, which is, like Jen, Jen said, very significant and absolutely connected to the closure of Highway 1. Um, you know, people are going around. They're coming down the 101. They're coming down the 101 and kind of bypassing our little corner of the world here. Um, so, um, so it, this is a big deal, and um, you know, I, I know Jen doesn't know exactly what Visit California is going to do, but I imagine they're going to do some press. Um, you know, it's been it was such a big thing for for them to. Um, oh, thank you. We're putting that back up. Um, <clears throat> such a uh, it was there was so much press about the closure of it, and um, so I imagine they're going to do some kind of press wing. I don't know how much advertising they'll spend, but I know for sure that, you know um, Visit California has offices all over the world, especially in the biggest um, international markets, and so they're constantly you know getting our messaging out. You know Visit California's messaging out, so I, I imagine that'll that'll happen in their international offices and through their PR and so forth. Um, so um, to that point, Jen and I talked about doing some, you know, spending a little bucket of money left over from, from this fiscal um, in some international markets in a really smart way, um, English-speaking markets, so we're not translating ads and so forth. Um, but those three top markets are um, the, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia. And so, um, you know, uh, the UK, Canada, and China are the top three um, travelers to California. Um, Australia, I think, um, is fourth or fifth. Um, they've got a lot of new, you know, direct flights from Australia that they've implemented over the past like three or four years. So that that um, international audience has been growing. So we've got ten thousand to spend in these markets in July, and um, to reach those core international audiences, we're going to spend six thousand of that with Adara um, in the UK and Canada, and then the other four thousand is going to be on um, Facebook and Instagram in UK, Canada, and Australia. Um, and so we think it's going to be really um, fun getting that message out there that <clears throat> we're here and we're ready for them and welcoming them with open arms to Morro Bay. And so we're just figuring out that messaging right now, and we'll get those um, up and running for July. So this would be a great test for the new Adair product too. For sure, for sure. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you have any any more questions for me, I'm happy to answer. And thank you. Thank you very much. All right, board. Um, are there any future agenda or announcements or anything that we'd like to add for the agenda for next month? I had a question, actually. Um, Jen, I wanted to ask um, like an update on a past issue that I kept on bringing up with um, adding uh, budgeting for staffing for you. Can you give me an update on that, where that's at? So that is with the city manager, Scott Collins, and he's reviewing my department and I think what, what I need done in there. That's what he's doing right now, and I hope to know fairly soon on his decision on that. Um, uh, I think it was the April meeting. Uh, was that the meeting when we uh, approved the budget? or re approve the budget that we recommended. Um, one, one key thing that was listed on there, there were some things that we wanted to add to that. What, what is the process, uh, like uh, for example, um, cre uh, creating more tangible KPI, key performance indicators uh, was part of our discussion that we were, I don't know if that were, we were going to implement that, but it was something that we kind of came to a, somewhat of a consensus. Uh, and there, I think there were a couple other items, like what's, what even happens with that after that meeting? So this was about the KPIs. That's what all this was about okay. is for next year. So budget-wise, it goes to, so the budget has been approved. City Council has to approve our agency of record. That is next Tuesday. And then everything will start rolling July 1. So, uh, so in terms of making more tangible key performance indicators part of our actual documentation, that's not... That's not something that's made it into into our documents. We just kind of talked about it in general. 
basically, basically what we had talked about at that April meeting is like, all right, we want to improve, it currently says we want to improve the number of stays or increase the number of stays. And our discussions seem to be in the vein of we want to increase our number of stays by 5% or 8% or something along those lines to make it a little bit more quantitative and tangible. Um, from a TBID standpoint, I think probably more than a, than a mental standpoint. But I, yeah, I'm just kind of following up on that. Um, happy to answer that. And Jen, correct me if I'm wrong, but so we so since the process kind of got delayed a bit, we're, we're just now kind of launching into our developing our marketing plan. As, as they develop, you know, hire a strategic planning firm. Um, and so that's where, in, in, in my mind, where those, um, where those objectives would lie, um, would be in the marketing plan. Um, in, in, in our goals and our objectives, we'd say, like, yeah, let's increase, you know, our, our goal is to increase average length of stay by, you know, up from 1.5 to 2% or something like that. So those are quantifiable objectives you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, it, that has to start at some point so that it can end at some point and yes. be measured against each other. Uh, right. So that, that was basically the name. Yeah, the so that would be in the marketing plan. Yeah, that'll be in the marketing plan. And I think, too, you know, having the um, strategic um, company come in, I think they're, they're going to be able to do the research to tell us, okay, what are our expected, you know, should, back up a little bit. So 10-year strategic marketing plan, right? So they're going to put numbers into place for us and what they can see in trends in tourism and marketing and, you know, what those anticipated goals should be for the city of Morro Bay. Um, we can certainly, um, you know, take a stab at it, um, but I think having it really be done in a professional um, um, manner by a strategic planning firm is kind of kind of where we want to go with that. And do, when we engage with them, who uh, do, do we uh, ask for certain things because we're paying for their consulting services? Like when, when does that kind of that yeah. list of requests, I guess, come sure. into play? So I've um, interviewed three different companies with the city manager and we're very close to hiring somebody to do that. And they've all put together very well thought out um, outlines for what it is and they'll it, it includes coming into the market and sitting with you and sitting with city people and sitting with hoteliers and, and doing all these different outreach groups vacation rentals is a huge part of it as well and really looking at the good and the bad of Morro Bay and what we need to help us move forward um, part of what I I'm looking for them to do is a is a long-term strategic plan in conjunction with that like Marianne was saying so their contract was done before I started and it was odd it was like a 16 month contract which didn't make any sense and so part of what we're doing is I've asked them to put together a 24 month marketing plan instead of doing this short term plan so that it matches well with the strategic plan and we can keep moving through instead of having this these short little patches of things um, the strategic plan will probably not be done for 8 weeks at least they need like four weeks of outreach and put all that product together. And so I asked Marianne to do kind of a temporary um, kind of outline. Her and I've you know worked a lot on it, so she's kind of doing some temporary stand-ins until we have their real focus on where to go. And this is a really great time of year to do that because again, it's summer and we don't do a huge amount of outreach during the summer months. And hopefully by September, when we're ready to push into um, our shoulder season will have the strategic plan either done or most of it done and that'll give Marianne the ability to get the plan done as well and that'll come back to you for your approvals does that help kind yeah. of and I'm, sure, I'm sure you and Scott are on it but the more the more numbers they can put in there the the better I think in, in all those objectives and goals He's, even a low quantitative expectation is more useful than sure a lofty uh, right. qualitative one absolutely Anything else from the board? Yeah, uh, speaking of things that have come up, uh, and I don't know if it's appropriate to ask you this now or it becomes a future item, but where are we on the new website development and what is the, do we have an expected delivery on that? Sure, um, right now where I'm at is we have a signed contract mm -hmm. and it should start going actually next week. Okay. Yeah. But, and until they get in there, they can't begin to, to tell us about a delivery date on it. Okay, no, that's correct. Thanks. I just have one announcement for hoteliers watching out there in TV land. Um, Visits Locale will be putting on a foreign individual traveler um, informational meeting tonight at the Morro Bay Golf Course from 5 to 7 uh, with representatives from Torrico 
to explain the FIT programs that are available for small properties and large properties um, to drive more foreign individual travelers to Morro Bay. And that is free tonight, 5 to 7 at the golf course. Also, one more thing. Um, the partnership with Central Coast uh, Tourism Council, CCTC, and Visit Slow Cal and um, Morro Bay Tourism uh, I spoke with Michael Womble yesterday, and he said that we were very well represented in the UK last week when they met with Black Diamond to discuss the reopening of Highway 1. So that was positive. that's a real positive thing for us is this reopening and getting that information to our, our partners with Black Diamond. So thank you. And with that, I'd like to uh, invite a motion to uh, adjourn. So good. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you so much, everybody, and welcome to summer. See you guys.